Welcome to my channel Black Sheep Logic. Today we're going to take a look at this Fluke 125 scope meter. This is two channel, 40 megahertz, 50 mega samples per second. This Fluke scope meter is packed with a lot of functionality for troubleshooting. In the Fluke 120 series, there is the 123, which is a 20 megahertz version, Fluke 124, which is a 40 megahertz version, and the Fluke 125, which is also 40 megahertz, but it includes bus health and power measurement. I will cover some of the basic functions of this Fluke 125. I will also set up a serial network and demonstrate the use of bus health. So let's take a look at this meter on the bench. For this setup we have the red lead plugged into the A channel and the black lead plugged into COM. To measure resistance, select ohms, press enter. It does not matter which way around the test leads are. We have a reading of about 2.3 ohms. And this is approximately 17 ohms. To select continuity, this is open, this is closed. Nice loud beep. To test a diode, this is a diode in a TO220 package. The black lead goes on the cathode, which is the center pin. The red lead goes on the anode, which is on either of the outside pins. We can see we have a forward voltage drop of 3.75 volts. To test capacitance, this capacitor is non polarized, so it does not matter which way around we place the leads and we get a reading of approximately 1.5 microfarad. This is an electrolytic capacitor which is polarized. So the negative lead must go on the negative terminal, positive lead on the positive terminal, and we have a reading of approximately 278 microfarad. To measure AC voltage, We're measuring approximately 238 volts. We can also see the AC sine wave. To measure DC voltage, approximately 8.6 volts. To measure current, you will require a current clamp. The current clamp I'm using has a BNC plug and I have this adapter which allows me to use it with this meter. To use a current clamp, the current clamp is clamped around the live conductor. I need to first turn on input B, and then I will select AC current. In this case, I'm using a current clamp that is 10 millivolts per amp. I need to rescale that slightly. For a steady waveform, I will need to trigger on channel B. To take a power measurement, I'm now using all three inputs, voltage and my current clamp. I will trigger on channel A. I will then move the waveform on channel A up. I can now see on my screen both the voltage waveform and the current waveform. 233 volts. 5.5 amps and approximately 1.2 kilowatts. I could also look at frequency. 5.4 amps, 49.96 hertz. I have my Fluke 726 set up to generate three pulses. These are square waves, 5 volt peak to peak. These pulses appear briefly on the display, but I want to be able to hold and capture those so I can analyze them. The easiest way to do this is to set up a single shot trigger. To 
to make a pulse width measurement, I can set up a cursor. The pulse width is 10 milliseconds. The period is 20 milliseconds, which works out to 50 hertz. A cursor can also be used to make a voltage measurement. The Fluke 726 will set to generate a 5 volt pulse. This agrees with our cursor measurement. Trend plot is very useful if you would like to plot changes over time. As we can see, the meter is following the changes. So average is now 8.8, .8, minimum 6.7, and the maximum was 10.5. In order to demonstrate bus health, I have set up a very simple serial network. This Tektronix 836 communications tester is being used to generate serial data. This is a power supply that is powering this RS-232 to RS-422 converter. I have attached channel A to pin 2, which is one of the data pins, and I have attached the common to the RS-232 ground. Select bus health and RS-232. From these three dots we can see that we have a signal and we have data. The bus health check is telling us that all of the expected signal parameters are okay. I can select board to see the number of bits per second. We also have the option to look at the eye diagram. This gives us a graphical representation. We can see the signal has very little jitter. I've now switched over to looking at the RS-422 interface. I have put on two 10X probes. I've selected RS-485 and we can see successful test. I hope you enjoyed the review of this Fluke 125 scope meter. As we could see in this review, there's a lot of functionality Fluke packed into this Fluke 125 scope meter. If you would like a function covered in more depth, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for taking the time to watch this review. If you did enjoy this review, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you very much.